By the way guys, just in case shit gets taken out of context and misinterpreted, basically the opinions of the people that get name dropped in the video are just used as a medium to address the wider hate brought against from viewers or fans that would have their said opinion. Yanka and the others just specified a certain opinion that made it easier to illustrate it in the video for you guys to watch and enjoy. Also you are welcome to respond to this video, small or big YouTuber, we don't mind, maybe we'll react to it, maybe we'll do part 2 and have fun. This is a fun debate to be honest for the whole community. The reason why I'm forced to make a sequel to my previous Boruto video now is due to the absolute clusterfuck that is the latest chapter. What was once billed as the successor and hyped addition to the franchise is now a fundamentally franchise breaking addition to the Naruto lore. This series needs to be fucking cancelled. This is awful. I don't know how anybody with any kind of dignity and respect for themselves can continue to read and watch Boruto being a Naruto fan and claim that this is good. Nothing about this is good whatsoever. This is awful. And as a fan of Naruto, this show has been a tremendous train wreck of disappointment. Jigen is an okay villain. He's super powerful. But all because you're a super powerful villain does not make you well written. And again, because this is a sequel of Naruto, it's legit. You cannot bring up Boruto without comparing it to Naruto. It's a sequel. It's kind of what it's meant to be compared to, the original. This shit is utter garbage. Trash. Awful. What is Jigen's philosophy? What makes Jigen unique? What is Jigen's mindset? What makes him better than Naruto? What makes him better than Madara? What makes him better than Obito? What makes him better than Pain? What makes him better than Sasuke? I want to hear what is Jigen's philosophy? I, I don't know. You don't know because it's a shit story. It's shit. It is shite. You don't even know the philosophy of your own fucking story because it's shit They ask you how you are you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine Welcome back everyone and it's time to go Bye. And in this video, we are addressing the debate regarding the reveal of Kachin Koji being a Jiraiya clone, and the complaints people have that Boruto as a franchise should not exist due to its inferior quality to its predecessor and the hollowness of its writing as it constantly disrespects the original Naruto manga. Now from the start, I'm saying this to you guys right now. This isn't beef, this isn't an argument, this is just a difference of opinion regarding the manga and the people that have voiced their opinion, they are entitled to what they think. Firstly, I don't want anyone to harass any of the people featured because frankly I found this hilarious I was laughing my ass off while I watched these videos like to me this just shows how passionate people can be and at least they are honest we can all agree at the end of the day this is a subjective topic and one's opinion can be changed in the future just as mine did regarding Boruto's character itself with new information and development of the plot coincided with new experiences we have in real life that growth can change your view on something that you once hated now I'm gonna be completely transparent to everyone watching this video that as as an anime YouTuber, we are not ignorant to the fact that this job comes with the fact that we have to shape how our audiences perceive us. At the end of the day, YouTubers get scrutinized on everything that you do. That's why it's difficult to run a channel because you don't want to pander to a certain audience, but at the same time, you don't want to be fake in regards to your genuine opinion because that just affects your integrity. And trust me, that feels like shit. That's why I try to make sure to shape the community on Anime Balls Deep where we can all be honest about everything. Fam, let's not act like I don't shit on the Boruto anime on a weekly basis. Yet yeah, our audience loves it when I do that and comment all the time that my reviews are more entertaining than to say is, as individuals, a difficult lesson to learn is that not everyone is going to like you and you can't please everyone. There will always be people that jump to negative assumptions if they interpret what you mean wrongly. I mean, someone sent me this Reddit thread recently they came across in DMs on Twitter stating, he really let me down today. Normally he's the type of guy who vomits shit like rationality, yet he was completely irrational when talking about Boruto's reason for not wanting to spend time with Naruto. Blah 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 blah. Well, I'm sorry Drink It Man, I truly am sorry because the reality of it is when it comes to entertainment, of course there are some liberties that you have to take to be comedic and frankly, most people that watch YouTube just want to reaffirm their own opinions and hear only great things about something they enjoy. Now I get it, I totally understand that perspective. 
but most Boruto anime dick writers would argue the fact that you shouldn't compare it to Naruto. Why do people like Yonko Productions, Seth the Programmer, Swai Kage, your boy Roshi, and Sammo Gaming hate this show so much? They are so irrational as you put it. But to be honest, although we disagree with them when it comes to the manga, as a Boruto fan, they are right, and you should be allowed to compare it to Naruto. Why the fuck is this show called Boruto Naruto Next Generation otherwise? The law and rules established in the writing are all interconnected and are building upon what Naruto left behind. So Boruto fans arguing the fact that we are not allowed to do this and compare it to Naruto, I'm sorry you have to hear that. Anyway, let's break down Yonko's video first and then I'll cover how the Boruto manga is actually keeping intact the philosophical message of Naruto and it's correcting the plot points Kijimoto left behind thus making it a valid sequel. Boruto being jealous of Naruto's interest in Kawaki and the journey that led him into accepting Kawaki whilst being rudimentary at its core does just enough to build his characterization. However, once again the fact that we as an audience know that Kawaki ends up destroying Konoha and supposedly kills Naruto removes any core investment in the tension within their relationship as we're forced to be confronted with the bait and switch that was chapter one. Okay, we completely disagree with what Yonko is saying here because Boruto is not jealous of Kawaki at all. He never was. In fact, Boruto is the one that suggests in chapter 25 that Kawaki should be brought to Naruto and he lets Kawaki spend time with him. Kawaki was developed as this confrontational teen that has issues trusting people as his own father sold him off to Jigen and he was later abused by both of them. He was used, abused and trained as a tool to become a vessel. Objectively, his character is written as a polar opposite of Boruto who had everything from the very start, whereas Kawaki had nothing. Boruto's initial confrontation with Kawaki is due to him being disrespectful and destroying Himawari's vase, but he's later sympathetic and realizes the pain that he went through since Kawaki admits he would rather be dead than to go through the ordeal of karma. Boruto is actually happy that Naruto fostered Kawaki and calls him brother all the time and they promise each other that they will get rid of karma together. Their rivalry is out of good and positive growth, aiming for the same goal rather than negativity and out of jealousy. And as Yonko pointed out, the fact that we know Kawaki will betray his brother in the future after he made a promise with him and they've accepted each other in their positive rivalry, it actually builds anticipation and interest on how this happens. How does it remove our investment fam? In my eyes, it actually adds more to it. The reason for this is because there's a certain psychological pleasure in knowing what's going to happen without knowing how exactly it will happen. That's why you sometimes see the ending at the beginning. For example, asking someone how they fall in love with someone in romantic stories or movies such as Fight Club, Memento, Pulp Fiction, The Usual Suspects, Slumdog Millionaire and The Prestige, which by the way are all movies that were nominated for Oscars and are considered some of the best of all time. Using this writing technique adds weight to everything else that happens in the manga and Boruto's actions as a character since everything will be interconnected to the moment his brother betrays him. Similarly I discussed the concerns I had against the inclusion of Kashin Koji who was building a direct reference to Jiraiya, a character held in high regard for his journey and ultimately his sacrifice in the Naruto series. Likewise I had hoped that the newly founded Kara Association and the potential of the new villains to be somewhat of a redeeming quality for the series. And don't get me wrong, I find Jigen to be a rather interesting villain in the sense that I'd like to see his broader ideology and the entire goal of the organization. However, Boruto has now completely and utterly jumped the gun with the reveal that the Otsuski clan are an alien race and tail beasts are designed to be combined into a ten-tailed beast that subsequently forms the foundation for a divine tree of chakra that bears the chakra. Okay, so there are a lot of points to address here. I know Seth the programmer clip mentioned the same shit about Jigen having no philosophy, but I'm gonna say it must have been taken out of context and I'm gonna presume he was doing a meme and he was debating someone, right? But there are a lot of people who are bringing up the opinion that Kashin Koji being a Jiraiya clone is 
is absolute bullshit and Ishiki Otsuki's development is non-existent and it's bland. The argument that Boruto's primary antagonist, the Otsuki being trash compared to the likes of Madara or any villain from Naruto, the reality is that this issue doesn't even stem from Boruto's writing. Kijimoto is the one who introduced Kage Utsuki at the end of the Four Shinobi War and the Boruto manga only does the natural thing to continue the story. Including Kaguya, yes, she was whack. She was trash. She was a waste of fucking time. A waste of a villain. We didn't need her. You could have just stuck with Madara. Alright, now this is an argument which we can agree with. Madara definitely should have been the final villain and then Sasuke should have been an anti-hero rather than a villain which regressed his character back into the direction where most people interpret it as Oh my god, he's going emo again and he's a Madara clone. But anyway, I still believe Sasuke is top 5 best written character in the show by the way and I think most people misinterpret him. But back to the point, I don't know any Naruto fans that wouldn't say Kaguya was kinda whack because frankly she was but in my eyes the Boruto manga is trying to fix this plot device logically speaking if anyone was trying to start a sequel to Naruto they would have to continue by addressing any unfinished plot the Naruto series left this obvious case would be the Otsuski if Boruto went in any other direction we would be left with some unanswered questions like where did Kaguya Otsuski come from is there any more like her what is their objective Boruto explores this to answer all of these questions why aren't Boruto hated is looking at this objectively rather than emotionally. Naruto and Sasuke literally witnessed an alien and found out she's the origin of Chakra, yet she's not from this earthly world. Wouldn't the most logical conclusion Naruto would make as a Kage is to make sure to investigate her dimensions which had her scrolls to see what her alien race was doing and why they came to earth in the first place? That's why he sends Sasuke on these missions and Sasuke literally states he needs to do this since they are deciphering the scrolls and found out the truth truth that there is indeed Otsuki out there that could be stronger than them. In our eyes, it's actually disrespectful to Naruto and Sasuke's characters as adults if they do not come to the logical conclusion the fact that they need to investigate what Kaguya was. What other writing and plot device could be the continuation of the sequel if it wasn't written about the Otsuki still being a threat to Earth if Kijimoto literally left out plot points that needed to be fixed at the end of Naruto and he himself created the Boruto movie. Furthermore, yeah, we all know for a fact that Naruto and Sasuke are indeed the pinnacle of the hierarchy in terms of power and are the reincarnations. They are literal gods. If they introduce new aliens or ninjas that are stronger than them that weren't actually Otsuki, wouldn't that be even more disrespectful? Why wouldn't you just fix the Otsuki plot points as a writer so that you could build upon the pyramid that was left behind rather than building something from scratch? Furthermore, the Akatsuki first appeared in the original Naruto in chapter 139 and their goal was officially more fleshed out in chapter 329. That's a 190 chapter gap of development taking place. Every single villain or plot device you're looking at within Naruto is from a holistic point of view, whereas Boruto still needs some time to develop and Kodachi has already planted some of the seeds of what Ishiki Otsuki's ideology might be. He already stated that he sees humans as an inferior race and that all people have a predestined fate in chapter 47. Ishiki's goals clearly align with the Otsuki clan and fits perfectly with expanding Kage's backstory and this is tackling two birds with one stone. We know for a fact that the Otsuki believe that they are a natural occurrence in their eyes and are gods. Other planets are subservient to them and it's a natural circle of life where human beings are their prey since they are the life force essence and have to be used to create chakra fruit for their clan. The creed of the Otsuki clan is to pass on their power, stating that power is absolute and should be given to the next person. But even this concept is a philosophical debate because Momoshiki says to Naruto it's a waste that he can't pass on his power to the next generation. And he even says to him, I don't know just how much time you spent mastering them. And this is reference to Naruto's jutsu by the way. But he states, with this pill, we can obtain powers greater than yours effortlessly. Naruto comes to the conclusion that what Momoshiki is stating goes back to his thoughts about the scientific ninja tools. And it could be his fault that Boruto got pushed to cheat since of course Naruto still believes in the ninja system. Therefore yet again Boruto and Ishiki Otsuki are interconnected with the wider message of Naruto's philosophy which is what makes us human. We as human beings learn wisdom and gain power through trials, tribulations and pain in some way. If one's power is given without this wisdom can it truly be used wisely and with good intentions of understanding others that may be weaker or not equal? Can a being like an Otsuki truly understand the 
responsibility of the power they possess with the mentality that they are born with inside their clan. That's another message Kodachi subtly hints at and by him expanding the Utsutsuki universe in Boruto, it actually stops disrespecting what Naruto and Sasuke achieved by ending the cycle of hatred because all countries for once are unified on peaceful terms. They're not repeating the same cycle of violence and war that we saw Naruto work so hard to stop. We don't want to see the same shit again. In fact, all nations are dealing with an outsourced threat against aliens from another world as a natural disaster. Also, how come Yonko is arguing the fact that uh, the Asusuke being aliens is a stupid reveal? That was obvious to every Naruto fan when it actually happened. I mean, when you see a bitch flying from the sky, landing on Earth with mad powers and shit, man ain't gonna think that shit's human. what's going on here but i'll act like i do okay let's continue the video this whole ten-tailed beast situation is nothing more than a retcon from the original series the ten tails that amada stated is not a retcon of the original naruto series kodachi took it into account as amada specified to naruto and sasuke that the ten tails he is describing is different to the one that they battled in the fourth war we need to wait for the development and explanations a bit more fam kage's ambitions were not really well thought out of by kishimoto and if he had any interest interest in developing or fleshing out her character he would have done so in a meaningful way in the original series which is not what he did let's be honest he didn't do that in the original series however when it comes to this manga it's almost nothing but criticisms now i am somebody who does believe in the value of human life but this child should have been aborted Bor hey yo what the fuck boruto literally took the worst aspects all of the stuff that made naruto fans mad about the ending of that series and took that and ran with it many times i feel like that's kind of the issue with boruto is that it automatically got off on the wrong foot and we've been waiting ever since for it actually to get really really good but guess what? Even in the manga, it hasn't gotten above average yet. I think I can speak for most Naruto fans when they say Boruto feels many times like a spit to the face of the series that we once loved. In reality to all these criticisms, the Boruto manga is keeping true to the philosophical theme of what Kijimoto started, but this time for a new age. In the Naruto series, the theme revolves around the cycle of hatred and revenge, along with the loss of life and how it can affect the loved ones they leave behind. Ultimately, the Naruto series bottled the real life problem we face in our day to day but on a grander scale. When looking back on things, everyone encounters some sort of strife of pain in their life. But for some, the pain can be far greater than others which will ultimately create a ripple effect on society and the world as a whole. The only way to solve the big issues in life is truly understanding others and their pain. In the Boruto series, the philosophy of understanding others also gets brought up but things are shifted to a more modern era. From the start of the Naruto series, which was around the year of 1990, and to the end of the series in 2014 or so in that 15 years of publication our own world went through huge technological advancement consequently changing the minds and perspectives of the newer generation of the audience much like how the ninja culture has changed in the series even if we point out the weakest arc in the boruto manga which is Mujina bandits if you want to say it is still consistent in portraying the message of boruto and the crazy thing is the boruto anime actually improved and fixed the manga this time round as we see Tento whipping out his black credit card that allows him to buy whatever he wants whenever he wants, similar to the real life concept of a black American express. Technology has improved to the point where wireless bank transactions can occur instantly and he wants to buy all the trading card game packs around the village so he can get Naruto the 7th Hokage to finish his collection. This is because Tento feels as though this materialistic possession helps define who he is. And let's not act like all of us didn't bang out Yu-Gi-Oh Pokemon cards fam when we were kids. Swag card guy, I see you fam, you, you have a Yu-Gi-Oh passion right? Man loves Yu-Gi-Oh too and I vibe with it, who didn't? In fact, I went to tournaments as a kid to compete with hundreds of other people, so the children in Boruto doing this is really relatable to me. I like that it's showing how drastically the culture of the villages have changed in peaceful times. Anyway, the message behind Tento's arc is quite deep and Okyo Kodachi is basing it upon our society itself. Essentially, a materialistic person is vested in owning material possessions 
possessions and equates them to happiness. This is especially so if the ownership of possessions is motivated by emotional reasons such as to look better, to feel better or to convey a status symbol rather than functional reasons which could be to improve productivity or to communicate with others. Clearly in Tento's case he is using the possession of things to fill the gap in his heart regarding his father not acknowledging him. Therefore he keeps calling others commoners and uses money to make himself feel better. In the real world materialism has become a trend in our society. Just look at the constant growing fixation on earning more money and owning material goods. At the same time we are now materially better off than we have ever been as the human race as we've progressed just as it's displayed in Boruto. Just compare our all-time high consumption of mobile phones, computers, cars and media. We believe as a society that having money and these possessions is what it means to be successful. This could either stem from caring about what others think too much or not self-reflecting upon accepting who you are as a person. Now realistically if the average person understood economics we know money is nothing and think nothing of it. Money is the means to get wealth not the wealth itself. Tento in the early stages of this arc uses his money irresponsibly to purchase businesses food and cards to get what he desires from Iwabe for example and he will act in this manner throughout the arc because he doesn't understand the repercussions. When Boruto probes deep into his desire for material possession of the card we find many false beliefs he displayed throughout the arc regarding ninja or culture. Materialism prevents you from addressing issues that will lead to your real happiness. When you are materialistic you base your satisfaction on material possession. However Tento discovers that physical goods only act as a temporary placeholder to cover the gap in his heart and he realizes oh my god my dream is actually wanting to be a ninja after becoming friends with Boruto by learning his way of life and Nindo. Why as friends we are frustrated because Boruto continues to take what we know from the franchise flip it on its head in a way that doesn't make sense never has never will and then expects you to go along with it. In any case I'm explaining this firstly to say what the actual fuck is going on with this series. So the biggest question nowadays is the morality of technology and Boruto is trying to explore that. Technology itself cannot be bad but the way we use it can be. This question is also reflected in the series from the creation of ninja gauntlets and the existence of Mitsuki himself. All of this challenges the questions of what is right and wrong and what value dictates that. Like in real life the great area of morality and debates within genetic engineering, nuclear weapons, the use of AI. I mean have you not been seeing the election of what Andrew Yang has been saying about AI taking over industries leaving people jobless? What about Elon Musk saying AI is the future and he wants to regulate it? The writers of Boruto have specifically stated that their backgrounds come from a scientific and technological upbringing and obviously in terms of a writing perspective these things will affect your inspiration in how you want to proceed with storytelling. They admit that one of the messages of Boruto will explore this concept. So what's wrong with that? This also goes back to the original series as Naruto is the only person that has brought the greatest change in the shinobi world by creating an era of peace for more than 15 years. It's the first time that the Gokage have been communicating to each other peacefully. Even Hashirama the first Hokage couldn't achieve this and he had to beg the Kage to not start a war and he ended up giving them all the tail beasts. Naruto doesn't have to do this. People genuinely love him and respect him for who he is and what he has accomplished for the whole world. Only with the newfound peace and stability technological advancement was able to take place. This advancement was actually needed to help protect the people of earth. In Boruto chapter 17 when Sasuke speaks about how there are individuals with Otsutsuki level powers operating in secret Naruto brings up the fact that they need power to protect everyone from the likes of them. The question of scientific ninja tools also gets brought up when Naruto clarifies to Boruto that these ninja tools are also another form of power that they can use. Even though Naruto banned it from the tuning exams due to it defeating the purpose of the exams the tools itself are not inherently good or bad and what's important is how you use them. Naruto reminds Boruto that the technology invented will aid them but it will not replace the need for ninjas. So far everything Kodachi has done is knitting perfectly in a synced sequel from addressing the shift in era, fulfilling the story plot left behind by its predecessor and like Kijimoto Kodachi also addresses the hard problems we face every day especially with the problem of technology as Kodachi tries to share a universal message that even with progression we should never lose the understanding of what makes us strong and important. It's not the technology but it's the heart and intention behind it. Whoa. 
now coming to the question of Jiraiya being cloned and if it was a bad take by Kodashi and it's absolute trash. Well, given how the community reacted, it showcases that it was in fact a great move. But some people feel like it was disrespectful and takes away from the original writing of Kijimoto. But isn't this funny? On these reactions showcasing the philosophy Kodachi is implementing and he's working on as it is indeed thought provoking. These reactions itself are the evidence. As Naruto himself as a Hokage who is in the position of power and has joined the political game must join in on the debate and figure out his stance on how he views technology. Currently in chapter 47 he seems quite upset and will be angry at the idea of his sensei's DNA being used as a tool as he always felt that was wrong since his childhood in the Zabuza arc. You never let him have a dream of his own, but he didn't care. And you just toss him aside like he was nothing. A broken tool. Man, that's so wrong. Toshin Koji being Jiraiya is also interconnected with the whole theme of the story. In the prologue of the Boruto series that Kijimoto himself wrote, we were introduced to the creation of the new Uchiha clan with the clones of Shin. Each of these clones didn't have their own identity but were just an extension of their father Shin Uchiha. But after he was defeated, the narrative was pushed to raise these kids as individuals which was later taken on by Kabuto in an orphanage. Likewise with Mitsu's creation, Orochimaru kept pushing the idea of Mitsuki coming up with his own will making his own choices. Later in the anime we were also introduced to the conception of Arcta and its fabrications. All of them started to display their own will showing us that even if creations are created by a supposed unnatural means they still have their own right to live. Funnily enough this can even go back to the Ninetale Beasts in Naruto as they were also creations by Hagoromo yet they were oppressed by human society even though they developed their own will. Coming to Koshi Koji, even though he is a Jiraiya clone, he is not Jiraiya. Koshin Koji no doubt is following his mission which it seems he was created for but we cannot say that he is doing this out of his own will. However, as a writer, the importance to using Jiraiya as a moral and philosophical piece to highlight the message of the series was in fact essential. It had to be Jiraiya and no one else for this message to work perfectly. The reason for this is because not only us as the audience but Naruto as well had a huge emotional attachment to Jiraiya and unlike the other characters Naruto was not able to say his piece with him. Minato Kushina and even the third Hokage were brought back in some sort of way to communicate with Naruto to give him peace of mind. Jiraiya was not and Kashin Koji's creation being like Jiraiya were interlinked with the story of what is right and wrong when it comes to technology. Um, by the way why was this a debate when it comes to Kashin Koji yet no one was pissed when Kijimoto brought everyone back from the dead in the fourth war. Uh, didn't that destroy all the value of every single arc that happened beforehand? What about Asuma? What about Zabuza? What about Pain? What about Itachi? All of them got brought back to life. That don't make no sense. To break this down even further, we have to understand why exactly Kijimoto killed Jiraiya. Now in an interview, Kijimoto stated Sasuke had his family killed, so he had revenge in his heart. But Naruto didn't have that experience. There's nothing that someone not in the same position can say that's convincing. Kijimoto explains the things Naruto said just didn't ring true to Sasuke. But later when Naruto Naruto lost Jiraiya, a father-like figure to him, he understood Sasuke's position for the first time. So Jiraiya's death was essential for Naruto's growth and depiction of his understanding of Sasuke's pain. Naruto from the get-go was born an orphan. He was lonely and hated from the beginning, whereas Sasuke had a loving family who was taken away from him. Killed in front of his eyes in fact over and over again and Itachi mentally raped this dude with Mangeko Sharingan. So to understand Sasuke's hatred and feeling of revenge, Naruto also had to lose someone he loved in a similar manner. Jiraiya being killed gave Naruto the incentive to become stronger for revenge. This was also Sasuke's attitude. However with Naruto after understanding Nagato's pain he realized that revenge would make him just like everyone else continuing the cycle of hatred. Ultimately this would make him a hypocrite against Sasuke in the final fight. And Naruto knew about his prophecy as the guy told him that you're gonna fight Sasuke in the end and he Sasuke, Naruto had this knowledge. So to actually be the person to bring Sasuke back he had to become a role model not only for him but for everyone else in the Naruto universe and all the freaking kids watching it on the TV screens at home. This was an evolutionary step Naruto
Naruto required to help him become the child of prophecy the ninja world needed. In another part of the interview, Kijimoto explained that the reason he didn't bring back Jiraiya during the fourth shinobi war was because he felt he couldn't write it in a good way and everything that made Naruto understand Sasuke's feelings might have been undone. So coming back to Boruto, once the prophecy was completed on Naruto's part and when Naruto vs Sasuke saga ended, the thought to bring back the idea of Jiraiya or his legacy wouldn't really do any harm but might actually help develop the characters even further as the Boruto series is now tackling the aspect on whether or not technology is right or wrong for society as well as the fact what is actually the purpose of Shinobi in a modern era. Now due to this I know Boruto haters would like to bring up the idea you know this series isn't even about ninjas anymore with all this alien bullshit and clones and shit right and I understand that perspective by the way but this very thinking is challenged throughout the series and even addressed in the very start of the series when Boruto says to Kawaki in the future that he is still a shinobi and is trying to uphold its values. <laughs> The whole point of this sequel is to show the audience that even with change and introduction of new things, the essence of old, and in this case the way of Shinobi, will always remain the same. Kaguya was easily the worst part of the original series and now we have a half dead bastardized sequel that has taken these horrible elements and continued to bait and switch audiences expectations and irrevocably damage the entire legacy of the original as it has no sense of direction or plan to provide characterization and growth for the new cast with the original cast being the last attachment of anything that remotely feels like Naruto. Is this guy Jiraiya reincarnated? Is he Jiraiya's son? I don't care. I don't know. Fucking Kawaki has prototype arm. Nothing of this gets me excited and just it's dead ass a bad look for the Naruto franchise and it's just kind of tanking right now. And I know you guys are going to have your YouTube people that are going to hype it up like it's the greatest thing ever but... <laughs> Once again, if you really think about it, Boruto isn't really introducing anything new to a grand scale, but it still maintains fresh enough ideas that keeps it consistent in the manga. For instance, in the Naruto series, the conception of clones was already present, and the idea of bioengineering, as we already had Orochimaru dabbling in his own scientific experiments. This dude was doing experiments on kids from day one fam! Let's not forget what happened to Yamato, the boy was abducted, tested on and injected with foreign cells, and just how your boy Nuxtok who puts it, Hashirama sells hair, Hashirama sells dare, Hashirama sells everywhere, bitch. The entirety of Naruto is about Hashirama's pee pee and everyone wanting a taste of that shit. <laughs> Now in many ways, Kawaki had the same done to him, yet Orochimaru is still relevant in making a clone of his cells with Mitsuki, yet no one scrutinized that Mitsuki is just an Orochimaru clone. So why does Koshin Koji being Jiraiya even deserve any flag? Also, the point about the karma being some plot convenience, we can again go back to the Naruto series and see many similar tropes, from the whole Biju seals to even Orochimaru literally reviving himself within a seal, my man was chilling inside Sasuke similar to the karma mark and that's why Orochimaru is still relevant in Boruto where they're gonna speak to him about how does the karma seal work because it works in conjunction of his jutsu and is very similar. Obviously we can argue and agree that yeah of course Amada did pretty much explain the same shit three times over in three different chapters and the pacing has some slight issues in the manga but at the end of the day this is a shounen, a manga that's targeted at 12 to 18 year olds. The new Otsutsuki concepts are gonna go in one ear and out the other unless it's broken down in simple terms step by step. Look at me man, I got a full bed and shit, I'm a grown ass man reading a shonen, getting excited and shit, and even I'm like getting confused at some of the concepts debating it all the time. <laughs> Now the last point to address regarding the power scaling being atrocious, firstly let's address the power scaling. Well yeah we know Boruto has actually had difficulties in showcasing the progression of Naruto and Sasuke's power within the sequel. Now please remember that I'm only referring to the power scaling as their actual characters as adults were written perfectly in our opinion in their mannerisms, their dialogue and outlook. I absolutely love it, I give it a 10 out of 10. But there have been times where even we have questioned what the heck is going 
going on fam from Naruto's fight with Delta to both Naruto and Sasuke fighting against Jigen. A lot of their skill set was left out making us feel that you know had these two gotten a lot weaker. Let's not even get started on how I meme the hell out of the anime because the power scaling is literally non-existent in the anime at times. Sasuke runs out of chakra at every moment or losing intellect just for the plot to pro progress and it's just plot convenience. We agree with that shit. There is so much we can mention when it comes to the power scaling that doesn't add up. All of this can be explained with head cannon, of course, or suggesting that their opponents are actually much stronger than we think. But all this would do is just make Okakodashi lose credibility for his ability to scale power. We just have to wait and see how Naruto and Sasuke explain what powers they do and do not have as the manga develops further. And to be honest, when I read manga, the main thing I'm focusing on is the plot. I don't care about power scaling unless it's completely busted that it destroys the said plot. Narrative and character development will always supersede power scaling to me because said power scaling will always be created in accordance to what the writer actually wants to occur for the character development or narrative in the first place. So we all agree the power scaling issues exist but that doesn't take much away from the great direction that Boruto's plot is going. There's lots of gems here and they're gonna shine later on. Overall the story hasn't even reached a quarter of the original run of the Naruto story in terms of manga and everyone is already trying to find massive gripes in this series saying it's absolute dog shit trash and it's a product that shouldn't exist and it's a sequel that you didn't want. In our opinion, looking at the Boruto manga objectively, I don't see how this is lower than a 7 out of 10. But everyone has their own subjective feelings to a piece of media anyway. Personally, I'd give the Boruto manga an 8.5 out of 10 so far. It loses points on manga paneling and a little story increments that could have been told better such as Amado of course. But overall, it's a justifiable sequel to me it still holds the essence of naruto just look how the fights play out the fights are based upon strategy it's not pure power it's based upon learning what your enemy is doing and what their philosophy is and all that sh good shit that we like from original naruto anyway our editors are gonna be pissed and we are broke out here fam they're gonna need a raise after this shit but seriously we have a lot more to say so we're gonna do another boruto video about ishiki utsuki if you enjoyed it please hit the notification button like the video I'll see you guys next time and spread this to all the guys that f***ing hate Boruto fam. Bye.